No matter where you come from, no matter where you're going, here's a place where you can take comfort in the knowing that whether if you've come to stay a while or just passing through, this door is open to you. Come and let's be silent. Come and share a hug. Come, let's pray together. Come love and be loved. From the blissed out to the turned out. From the pampered to the abused. This door is open to you. Come on. This door is open for you, to you. Welcome each and every one of you. And as we are gathered here in the building, I always like to take this opportunity for us to pause and to wave at the camera and to welcome those that are joining us from wherever you are, whenever you are. Welcome to the light and love of unity of the beautiful Blue Ridge. Amen. <laughs> We always like to begin our time together in prayer, and so I invite you to just close your eyes a minute as we turn our awareness within, and we greet this day with the spirit of a new day. We greet this day with the openness of mind, of heart, a spaciousness of being. Every day, the cycle of sleep and wake is truly a being born, being awakened again. Every 24 hours, so to speak, is a reminder that our life is continually being renewed, that we are living, I-N-G, actively bringing forth, expressing the life presence. Today we explore this cycle of who we are as an expression of all that is, and the power of release, and perhaps a new way of understanding what that truly means the gift that it is. And so today we open for the gifts that are here for us as an individual, the gifts that are here for us collectively, the gift of spirit and soul. And for this time together, may we be blessed that we may be a blessing. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Good morning again, and welcome to each and every one of you. We want to acknowledge our children, our young people. If we have any children that are five or older, we're currently having Sunday school for children five or older, Reverend Gabby and Reverend Bar Barbara Ann. As our young people are coming over, we're gonna, we extend a blessing that says, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you. So we direct that to our young children, and we say, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you. Hope you have a wonderful Sunday school experience this morning. I'd also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge anyone that may be here for the first time. If you're a newcomer, this is your first time in the building, would you raise your hands and let us know that it's your first time? Welcome and thank you for being with us this morning. So, so glad to have you. If you're a newcomer online and it's your first time, raise your hand and we're going to welcome you too. It's glad to, we're so glad to have you and welcome you wherever you are. We're so blessed every Sunday to experience such a powerful um, music team we have with us today. Our very own Cat Williams is back. Come on up, Cat. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Schulman, our music director, is back in New York City for a couple of weeks, but have no fear, we have Melody Cooper with us today with Dave, Joel, Pete, and Joey, and so we're so blessed to have our team with us. 
Today we're going to be continuing, we're moving forward in a 12-week series that's been based on what we call 12 powers. We'll get into that in a few minutes, and today is week 11. How many of you have been enjoying the series? I've really enjoyed it, and I hope you have too. Today we get into week 11 as we talk about the power of release and what that really means. And so to kick us off, our very own Cat Williams. Would you give Cat a warm welcome this morning? It's good to have you here, Cat. Cat Williams, let me grieve my heart no more. I want to introduce you to our current board president, Bobby Flowers Owen B. Yeah, Bobby, thank you so much. <laughs> She's going to share a reading or a quote with you today and then just uh, highlight a couple of announcements. And Bobby, we, we want to thank you. You know, during, we, we've been so blessed at this spiritual community, the quality of individuals, both capable and willing, that have served on our board of trustees is in, just, it really is impeccable. And those that have served throughout the time of COVID, throughout these changing times, it takes a special skill set to be willing to hold that kind of space. And so we want to thank you for that. All, each and every one of you, those that have served and those that are serving. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. 
I just want to say it's so great to see all these beautiful smiling faces without the masks. <laughs> I mean, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been here. We've been out of town on things happening. But anyway, it's so wonderful to see your beautiful smiling faces today. Let me just say that. Um, I have a couple of announcements, a couple of dates I want you to put on your calendar. First is Monday, April the 11th, and Tuesday, uh, the 12th. TPS will be doing their land, starting the landscaping project here um, out front of the church, and we're calling for volunteers to help with some of the labor. This will bring our costs down some, and you get to play in the dirt. What, what better <laughs> way to spend a Monday and Tuesday morning, afternoon, right? If you are available on either of those dates, if you will get meet with Gail Ray and Gail, if you'll stand up for me. Gail Ray will be out in the lobby right after the service. She'll be able to give you additional information should you need it and, um, you know, put your names down on our list or whatever if you can make it out. We'd love to have you. Secondly, May the 1st, we're having a fun food fellowship day after the service. Don't have a lot of details yet, but just put May 1st on your calendar and remember, you know, to come to church that Sunday, listen to the service, and then we'll have fun fellowship and food afterwards, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I would like to read a quote, but before I read the quote, I did hear this little joke the other day. <laughs> I felt like I needed to say it this morning. <laughs> So this young um, monk went to the master and said, Master, is it okay if I use email? And the master said, as long as there are no attachments. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I have a quote that I read a while back in it just touched my heart, and it's from Jack Cornfield, and I'd like to read it this morning. It says, to let go does not mean to get rid of. That's right. To let go means to let be. Mm -hmm. When we let be with compassion, things come and go on their own. Think about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bobby.
in the God of all of us. And yesterday I'm letting go. I'm walking away from the thinking that held me for so long. Today is the day I walk away. I'm walking away from the last day that led me to confusion. Today is the day I walk away. I'm walking away from the thinking that held me for so long. Today is the day. Cat Williams and our band with a beautiful song by Eddie Watkins Jr. They'll be back in a few minutes. Give them a hand again. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. That song was written by Eddie Watkins Jr. And he's going to be here this summer, but he tells the story, a, a story of sobriety and recovery, a story of every day making the choice again to walk away from things that no longer serve. And that song fits beautifully because today, as I mentioned earlier, we are talking about release and the power of release. I want to acknowledge last week and thank Esther Nicholson, those of you that enjoyed Esther here. She is just someone that truly lights my fire. If you, did, if you weren't here, make sure you watch the video. Esther is just such a powerful um, speaker and presence. And I had the opportunity, after being gone 12 years, I went back to the island of Maui. And so I, I had the opportunity to speak at the church there and to experience that place again and to get to know myself in that place again. And so I bring you a warm aloha welcome from the people of Maui who are six hours behind us, probably not watching now, but they, <laughs> they and their minister, Reverend Blaine, send you aloha. So I bring that greeting with you. It was a, a wonderful opportunity to experience that. And perfect as I was preparing to talk about release because as I was flying into the beautiful island of Maui looking, I noticed it looked different and I couldn't put my finger on it. And I landed and I got a car and started driving. I still couldn't quite identify what was different. And it took me a little bit to realize that some 100,000 acres of sugar cane and pineapple are no longer on that island that that agriculture um, industry is no longer there. And, and so when I realized what it was, what was missing for so long, for a few days, I kept seeing what's missing. Have you ever had something in your life that all you could see was what was missing? And then I really looked a little bit further and I noticed and they actually had signs and so I apparently wasn't the only one signs that said lemons and limes and so in place of sugar cane and much of the pineapple they're now growing fields and fields of lemons and limes and other things and so there was something there but I had been so conditioned to what was and I had to remind myself of a mantra that I use quite often, and I've taught it to many of you, and it goes like this. That was then, this is now. Would you do that with me? That was then, this is now. Cultivating the capacity to release and to realize the gifts that are right here. And, and what release really means. And so we're in week 11 of a 12-week series. Now, just so you know, 
Next week for Palm Sunday, we're going to have sort of a fun service where we're going to go, uh, I'm going to bind or, or blend the first 11 together because I'm saving the 12th power, the grand finale for Easter <laughs> <laughs> to bring it all home. And just so you know as well, on Easter Sunday, we're already prepared. These doors are going to be open. There'll be chairs out there because we're expecting an overflow. And so um, for those of you that are watching, it masks are optional, but if you're not quite as comfortable being inside, then have no fear. You can be out on the patio in the open air, and we'll have that blended opportunity on Easter. But today we talk about the 11th power, which is the power of release. Throughout this, we've been talking about what are called, again, just words are words, what are called 12 powers. They're really trying to help us understand capabilities, aspects of our spirit, of who we are. They're dimensions of our being. We started the first week with the, um, the, the power or the capability of faith. And faith is being established. It is your being established as a spiritual being. Week two, we talked about strength, being established, uh, being enabled. Strength is being spiritually enabled. Love is being impressed and expressed with your true nature, which is love. We talked about wisdom, which is being enlightened. Power, being empowered. Imagination, being inspired. Understanding, being spiritually realized. It's spiritual realization. We talked about will, which is being self-directed. Will is the seat of personal authority. We talked about order, being self-organized. What do we organize our life around? We talked about zeal, being enthused. Enthused meaning in theos, in God, having our being established in God. And this week we talk about release. Release is being spiritually liberated. It's what it is to be free. And all of these are, um, they're, they're actions, you work with these, you know, you exercise will and love, you practice these things, but you also experience these things. They're both. They're an, an exercise, a practice, and an experience, a way of being. And that's very, very important today when we explore release, because release is a practice Sometimes we can use the words of letting go. Charles Fillmore used the word renunciation. That really comes from more of a Zen understanding. But when he talked about um, release and letting go. But there's also the experience of your being released from all attachment. Bobby, that joke was very beautiful. (laughs) You can send an email without attachments. And so release helps us understand how to be fully invested in life without undue attachment. And learning and all of life is, is about that. I, one of the most memorable cards I've ever seen, on the front of the card it says, you are the answer to my prayers. But then when you open it, there's kind of a screamy face and it says, but you are not what I prayed for. <laughs> and and it's, a, it's a, a reminder of how we have to let go of our preconceived ideas that you're the answer to my prayer, but oh boy, this is not what I prayed for. <laughs> that release is a part of that, is learning to... Let go of preconceived ideas to hold our expectations lightly. Now, I want you to really understand when we're talking about release, we're not talking about giving up. We're not talking about not caring. As a matter of fact, we may even be talking about caring more deeply. But caring so deeply that you hold it in a place that understands the preciousness of life and that whatever we hold, we hold realizing how precious life is and that this too shall pass. You know, that's the good news and the other news. This too shall pass. And so when we are entering in and and talking about release, we want to look at it today of what it means to let go of preconceived ideas and expectations Letting go of our need, our desire, our clinging, our grasping, our 
insatiable desire to control the outcome because it's futile, have you noticed? (laughs) To let go of error thinking, erroneous beliefs. To realize that that was then and this was now. But we don't throw that out. We build upon that. And that's really important. Our relationship with what has been. Because if we're not gleaning the gifts. We're not truly being open to the next uh, available expression of our being. We let go of delusion, of judgment, of hatred, of resistance. So we want to look at this today through the lens of. The nature of release, the practice of release, and then the experience of release. Now, the nature of release. Each and every one of us, you know, release is a force of nature. And from the day we are born in this earthly body, we know we come into this earthly form with an expiration date. We know that. We don't necessarily like to think about it. And and a lot of times we spend our life trying to do everything to outpace it. And yet the reality is we know that we come into this this form with an expiration date. We know that, that release is a part of every form. That every form, nothing really disappears. All creation simply changes from one form to the next. And so the nature of release... Nature is the greatest teacher. We look outside and you can look over here now and it looks sort of brown. You see just a little bit of green emerging. And nature realizes the plants and the trees that they release, they shed, they let go in order to bring forth their next level of expression. From the snake that sheds its skin, from the crustacean that gives up its shell to find another shell. Do you ever feel like you're in that in-between moment where uh, you notice the little crustacean that has to give up a shell to find another shell? There's a moment it has to run naked on the beach. Do you ever feel very vulnerable? that I, this doesn't quite fit and, and, and I, I know that this has run its course and yet I don't know what the next form of expression will be. It's a part of, that's, it's a very natural part. From the waves, I spent a lot of time recently just taking in the beautiful waves of Maui and, and, I, and it never ceases to boggle my mind how the massive ocean has the intelligence to roll in and then back out all the while on a round ball flying through space, never mind you. I mean, just try to wrap your mind around it. But it comes in and out. And try this for a second. Just take in a deep breath and hold it. And just keep holding it. Just hold it a little bit longer. A little bit longer. Okay, let it go. (laughs) You see, you know, there's a force. There's something natural that's built in. We don't just take in, there's the flow of life. And we know that, we see it all around us. And so when we become conscious and aware of that, when we realize that release is a part of the natural flow, and as Bobby touched on in her reading, to release something is not the same as to get rid of necessarily. A great teacher in that has been, in the past few years, how many of you recognize the name Marie Kondo? Maybe you saw the Netflix show Tidy Up or you read the book. If you're not familiar with Marie Kondo, now there's a phrase you can say, I'm going to Kondo it. That Marie Kondo came from Japan, if I remember correctly, and she's an expert in the art of organization, organizing things and creating beauty and balance. And so she would go into homes that needed some organization. She would go into homes that had a lot of clutter and a lot of stuff. Anybody got stuff in any area that could, could go? Anybody got any stuff inside of you that could be cleared out, that were full of a lot of stuff, you know? <laughs> and so she would go into these, these places and, and into these homes and work with individuals to, to create some spaciousness. But there was something very powerful she did. She would always tell people whether it was an object that you were seeking to to get rid of or to to release, 
to clothing, whatever it is you were seeking to release, she was very mindful. She didn't use the words, get rid of it. She talked about releasing. And something that she did and she taught the individuals to do was before you release it, she would pick up anything and say, ask yourself, does it bring you joy? Is this useful and does it bring me joy? Is it useful or does it bring me joy? For example, your toothbrush may not bring you joy, but I can assure you it's useful, you know. <laughs> so is this useful and or does it bring me joy? And if neither of those, if it's really not useful, if it's not bringing joy, then perhaps it's time to release it. But she said, before you release it, give thanks. That was an incredible important part of it because otherwise you may find yourself trying to just get rid of stuff as if there's no value as if there was never a point and as if you never gained anything from it the powerful point is before I release it I need to receive the gift you see we need to assimilate the gift Maybe the gift was, wow, that looked great on the rack and I thought I could wear it, but I never got this body into that thing. So just bless you. You're going to go on to somebody else. Or, you know, my kid had all these things when they were little and, and, and I'm so afraid. There's a part of me that doesn't want to let it go because I feel like I'm letting part of them go. And yet perhaps I can take just a few things that are very precious to me and then I can receive the gift and bless it and I can see that moving on and being useful elsewhere. You see how it's very important that I'm not getting rid of, I'm consciously releasing. And, and an aspect of that is to assimilate the gift. Back when I lived on Maui, I took a, a nutrition class at the Maui uh, Community College. And the, the teacher, the first night, he said, all of you know this, you are what you eat. We all said eat. He said, incorrect. <laughs> he said, you are what you assimilate. He said, if you eat a penny, are you a penny? <laughs> I don't know what else I got out of the class, but I thought, that will preach, you know. <laughs> 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 that, that's life. We are what we assimilate. See, that's really, really important. When we're talking about release, the whole part in, of release, the reason nature releases what it releases is so that it can return and integrate and reemerge. That each and every one of us, when we begin to reshape our understanding of what it means to release, that it's a part of a continuum that when I release, I'm also integrating the gifts that in all things, you see, all things are not good, but good can come in the midst of all things because I can discover an inner resource that is good. I can discover and make a commitment to do something where I would harm none. Good can be born in the midst of all things, and so no matter what has happened, no matter what we have picked up and acquired, assimilating the gift as best we can and then the intention to release really opens up the energy for us to be in a constant state of renewal. So to understand when you really get that, you realize that that is the nature of release. There's a beautiful reading that comes from the Ukuni Yoga teaching. And it says, it is the worst thing when people do not know how to escape from old ruts. It is dreadful when they approach new conditions with old habits, just as it is impossible to open a present day lock with a medieval key. Likewise, it is impossible for people with old habits to unlock the door to their future, the door to their greater expressive, expressing their greater potentiality, their greater possibility. And so when we realize that that's natural and begin to work with it, we become open to the gifts to be perfect. The scriptures tell us to be perfect. They don't explain that, but what perfect means is be ripe to the moment. Be ripe to the moment, whatever is there. If you're ripe to your moment, then whatever you're facing, there's going to be gifts and there'll be something available for you at that time. But as long as we're holding on, 
as long as we're trying to have things the way they were, then we're going to miss what's available right here. So the nature of release. For every one of these attributes or powers, there has been a disciple. The disciple that represents release is the disciple Thaddeus. Now, in the what we call the canonical gospels, what most people consider the Holy Bible, the Christian Bible, the Old and New Testament, is not the summation of all the gospels that were ever written. But back under the Emperor Constantine, a group of men uh, and the emperor decided what would be considered canonical holy scriptures. But in recent years, many uh, manuscripts have been discovered from that time in history that weren't included. So Thaddeus is mentioned in the, what we call the canonical Bible, but there's a whole Acts of the Holy Apostle Thaddeus. So there's a lot said about Thaddeus that's not necessarily recorded in the Bible we're familiar with. And so in those scriptures, it gives us more insight to who he was and perhaps why Thaddeus, why Charles Fulmer believed Thaddeus represented release. In, according to the Acts of the Holy Apostle Thaddeus, it says, Jesus is speaking. Jesus said, and after I have been taken up into the heavens, I shall send thee my disciple Thaddeus, who shall enlighten thee and guide thee in all the truth, both thee and thy city. Now, these scriptures are also, um, they contain a lot about personal initiation. And a big part of what Thaddeus did is that he removed and abolished the idol temples and he established true spiritual centers. And so Thaddeus represents in our life that part of us that is always releasing and moving out what is false, what is an idol, a form of something but yet is not the truth. It's always helping us clear out that which is false and establish ourselves as the light being that we are. You know, because we already are the light of God, and the purpose of this lifetime is that you know it in every cell of your physical body. So Thaddeus represents that, and so that helps us understand the nature of release, and then we move into the experience of release. There's a lot in the scriptures about the power of release. If you look at um, just some of the things that Jesus talked about when he said, become as a little child... Children remain curious. Children aren't attached, not very long. They remain curious. One of the things Jesus constantly taught the disciples is shake the dust off your feet. Feet represent understanding. Shake whatever your current understanding is. It doesn't mean you're giving it up. It simply means I want to shake off the dust so that I remain available to build upon that understanding. Shake the dust off of your feet. Um, Jesus also talked about you can't put new wine, wine representing spirit or consciousness. You can't put new wine into old wineskins. They made their wineskins out of animal um, parts or animal fur. And so when you're making wine, what happens through the fermentation process? It expands. And so they said, you you can't put new wine in an old skin. He was using examples they would understand, but he was trying to help them understand would help them really practically see that just in everyday life, when there's something new that is coming forth, the old form will not contain the new expression. The old form cannot contain the new expression. That's why in our world right now, we are seeing forms of power, forms of structure, forms and forms and forms are all falling apart because old forms cannot contain the new ways of being. And so it is with us. The beauty of us, the beauty of the human spirit being is that you can be many people in this lifetime. You can evolve and have many layers and levels of consciousness while you're in this one body. How many of you have know you've had at least one or two or three evolutions in this lifetime. I saw some hands go up, go up very fast. There's a powerful um, story in the scriptures about an individual that's just referred to as Lot's wife. You may remember the story. Lot was a cousin of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Lot um, and his family settled in um, the, the outreaches of Sodom. 
and the wickedness of people's heart, as the scriptures say, they become so wicked, Sodom and Gomorrah were going to be destroyed. And so they told Lot and his wife, leave, leave immediately, do not look back, do not stop along the way. It is imperative, leave, do not look back. And as the story goes, this comes from Genesis, I believe, chapter 19. As the story goes, on Lot's, way, Lot's wife's way out, what did she do? She turned around. And what did she turn into? A pillar of salt. And so if you take the Bible literal, I ask you to really consider that. <laughs> that, that it, it's, there are literal meanings, but this is very, it's rich with symbolism. The symbolism of saying you cannot look back and move forward. And so it's a powerful story saying that there's times that come in our life when you can't, you just have to keep going forward. You have to be able to carry the memories in your heart because I can't dwell there anymore. I carry the gifts within my being because I can't live there anymore. I can't necessarily go back there. But I carry it and I carry the way that it has changed me. It will forever be a part of you, but carry it forward, my friend, with an openness of being. That's what it is to really begin when we begin to experience. Zen Buddhism, there's a book called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Beginner's Mind is called Soshan. There's a lot of similarities between Buddhism and Christianity. There's a lot of similarities in many of the mystical branches of of any religion. And where the scriptures would say, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit. The Buddhist would say, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. The mind of the beginner is empty and free of habits and assumptions of the expert mind. The beginner's mind is available, ready to accept, and open to all possibilities. Now, it doesn't mean that the expert renounces all that they know. It simply asks the expert to maintain spaciousness for new understanding. You see, there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in how we show up when we can have comfort in our our understanding and our knowledge and all that we've assimilated and experienced and still create a spaciousness that allows us to learn to gain new insight and new understanding in each and every one of those areas in our life where we've learned and however we've learned. Ways that we we do this in our life, morning prayers. Part of the intention around morning prayers and evening prayers were the morning prayers were meant to align us with with the reality of a new day. Create in me a clean heart. Create a receptivity. Let me use all that I have assimilated, all that I have with a newness, with a freshness. Help me be available to learn. And then the evening prayers were to release and to let go. I've told you um, many times, uh, many Hawaiian stories, but one of the most profound that I learned when I lived and worked in Hawaii is called the bowl of light. The authentic Hawaiian culture teaches their children that when their children begin to grow, they give them a bowl and they tell the child, you are like this bowl of light. You are beautiful and precious and you are pure light. You are a sacred container of the creator and your light shines. And then the parent will take some pebbles or stones and they say, and when you go throughout your day, you experience things. Someone may hurt your feelings and they drop a pebble in. You collect that. You experienced it. It happened to you. You may celebrate and have joys and they, they, drop, they keep dropping stones in and they explain to the children that every day you go out in this world and you experience stuff and you collect it. It becomes a part of you. And the parents then say, but if you're not careful, as time goes on, you will be so focused with all that you've collected that you yourself will become like the stone bowl versus the light within the bowl. And so they teach the children that they need a practice called huli, H-U-L-I. Huli means to turn, just to turn it over. You need a practice every day 
Jesus called it, shake the dust off your feet. The Hawaiians call it, Huli, your bowl. What do you call it? You know, what practice do we have that every day we can begin to extract ourselves from the experiences? As a parent say, you collect the stones of experience. These stones shape you. These stones form your understanding. And yet, all that you collect is never meant to define you. It is actually meant to free you. All that you collect is meant to help you discover who you are beyond any of that. And so to realize the nature of release and then to create a practice for release. Journaling is a great practice for release. Prayer, meditation, all of these are great practices. My mother, um, Rosa Howell was her name, was about this tall and she was almost as round as she was short, this little short round lady lived in North Carolina, the eastern part of the state, had a really sandy yard. And my grandmother would collect reeds and she made these homemade brooms and she'd sweep, she'd literally sweep the yard. And she was sweeping the sand and she always, when she would sweep, she would start singing, I know that I know that I know. And we would stand back and giggle and watch grandma because she would start sweeping and, do, and she would just start doing, doing her thing. And as the years went on, I realized she wasn't so much sweeping the yard as she was sweeping herself. You know, my mom used to say, go outside and shake the stink off yourself. Anyway, like you just, you need to go out and shake it off. You got to go out. So what ways do we have of helping extract ourselves? which leads us to the third. So there is the nature of release. There's the experience of release. Or there's the nature of release. There's the practice. We have to create some mindful ways. Different cultures, you know, we have rites of passage where we, we celebrate grades and graduations. We celebrate certain things. I'm going to be 60 years old this year. I don't know how that happened, but it did happen. And in many cultures, they celebrate from being a child to a maiden to a mother to a crone. I'm going to be a crone. Look out. <laughs> That that they have rites of passage that don't stop when you graduate high school or college. Many cultures have daily rites of passage that remind you that was then, this is now. How will I take all that has come before me and show up? How am I going to take that and show up today? The nature of release, the practice of release, Melody, would you give me that song, which leads us to the experience of release. Now, there's a difference in relief and release, and I really want you to experience release. Have you ever been driving down the highway speeding? Perfect. (laughs) Maybe on an interstate, and you passed the highway patrolman. Your prayer life just got activated. Lord Jesus, please help me. Oh, my Lord. I cannot get a speeding ticket. My insurance will go up. That'll cost me money. Oh, Lord, my husband, my wife. No, no, no. Lord Jesus, please. You're holding your breath. You've slowed way down now. And they keep going. That, my friend, is relief. (laughs) Whoo! Dodged a bullet. We know and we cherish the feeling of relief, and it's a precious thing, but that's not release. The reason that we need to create spaciousness and release to continually make ourselves available is so that we can experience being, capital B-E-I-N-G, period, experience being released from all attachment, released from form while we're still in the body. While we can experience pure being beyond form. Again, when I lived in Hawaii, my oldest nephew graduated from high school. So I flew back to the mainland. I saw Gavin graduate high school. And then I took him back with me. He spent some time with me on Maui that summer between high school and college. And those are very impressionable years. Even though an 18-year-old thinks he's grown and knows everything, very impressionable years. 
And I kind of watched him as the days went on. And about after being there about a week, and this was a particular day that I had taken him to a couple's house who attended the church, and they had invited him to come over so he could literally pick lemons and limes and papayas and mangoes and, and avocados and cut bananas. And I had told him, I said, well, you know, you need to dress accordingly because when you cut bananas, it gets black sap all over you. So whatever you wear, it's going to ruin it. So he said, well, do you have an old T-shirt I can wear? So I had a T-shirt that had a very colorful clown on the front, which I gave to him and he wore. And he drove my old beater Subaru, Subaru that I had that I bought on the island. And when he came back that day, it was an 18-year-old with a smile that was just priceless. And I looked at him with that clown shirt that he would not be caught dead in on the mainland. That had black stuff all over it. I looked at him with the windows rolling down and his hair all messed up driving my car. Because he takes pride. He took pride. And he does take pride. And as we were having dinner that night, he said, I feel so free here. He said, I, I just feel different. He said, I feel liberated. And I said, well, tell me more. You know, what, what do you think that is? And he said, well, I've been thinking about it, actually. He said, when I'm home, he said, I really care how I look and what I think and what I drive and what other people think. And here, he said, I still care, but not the same way. And he said, I never knew how much I cared. I never knew how much I was invested in that. I never knew how much energy that was taking until I love this ugly clown shirt and I don't care. I'm just, that is release. You see, he, something opened up and he caught a glimpse of who he was beyond caring about what other people thought. He caught a glimpse of how free it is to live without the conditioned mind. That's the power of meditation. That's the power of observation. That's the power of paying attention. Because the more and more you meditate, the more you enter into that place of knowing yourself beyond. And then taking that awareness right back into this body. You see, that's what it means to die before you die, to know yourself beyond. That the purpose of life is to know yourself beyond the form and then to inform your form with that knowing. That's the power of release. This week we explore the nature of release. I invite you into cultivating your practice of release. How many of you would be willing to release, to put something into circulation, at least one thing this week? How many of you would be willing to examine a worn out belief and to put that into circulation? Now, you can take that old Tupperware to the uh, goodwill and release it immediately. But when you're trying to release those worn out beliefs, you have to take them to the curbside of your psyche again and again. Every time they come back, you have to say, oh, thank you, but I released you. Oh, thank you, but I released you. And how many of you would be willing to spend some quiet time? Nature is another place that can take you to that place of oneness where you know yourself beyond form. To experience that. We're going to enter into a time of meditative prayer. I've chosen this beautiful song by Karen Drucker that says, I lay it down. On the altar of love, it goes like this. I lay it down, I set it free, I let my heart rest, I let it be, I lay it down, I set it free. I lay it down on the altar of love. I lay it down. I set it free. I let my heart rest. I will let it be. I lay it down. 
I will set it free. I lay it down on the altar of love. I invite you to close your eyes. With your eyes closed, just to let your shoulders drop a little bit more. As your shoulders drop a little more, just to sort of flick your fingers as if you were flicking off dust. Now to just turn your palms and slightly cup them and hold them in your lap if that's comfortable. To release is to realize the in-breath. To release begins with the realization of what has been taken in. To release is the realization that something has been taken in. And to make the conscious choice to assimilate and welcome the gift. Just as the cells of our being are continually and constantly taking in the nutrients, taking in the oxygen, taking in the life, taking in the vitality of pure presence, you and I are taking in the gift of life, the breath of life. You and I are taking in impressions and experiences. We're taking on concepts and ideas and beliefs. We're experiencing things that are shaping us. We're experiencing things that are shaping our hearts and sometimes even hardening our hearts. We're taking in things that cause us to expand, to become spacious, and we're also taking in things that cause us to constrict and contract and to build up walls. That is a part of the taking in process. And so we bring mindfulness to all that we take in and we ask the Holy Spirit to soften our walls. As the potter with the potter's clay, as Jeremiah said, make me malleable, moldable, make me shapeable, make me continually renewable for life is continually renewing. Wherever I have become stuck, Wherever I have set up permanent residency when you have told me to build a tent and to keep myself movable. Wherever I have tried to establish myself and claim it and name it and own it, remind me that I am here to be a sacred vessel and an instrument of light. Remind me that I am porous and malleable and mold, constantly being molded. And so we breathe in that willingness to hold gently. And wherever we have built up, we ask that it be held lightly. That the Holy Spirit would allow us to receive the gift of all that has come before with wisdom and love, to be wise and compassionate to be available and yet self-preserving. It's not an either or, it's a both and. To be able to dance this dance of life where I care for my life and yet I realize that this too shall pass. So we create this place of opening, of spaciousness. May we create the willingness to keep spaciousness in our thoughts. When I find myself digging down, say, no, that's just the way it is. When I find myself believing it can't possibly change. When I find myself locking in saying, oh no, I'm right, you're wrong. To create spaciousness a space to hold whatever I know and whatever I believe, 
in a space of compassion that allows me to continually be informed and inspired and used and renewed. May we be individual instruments that are continually renewing, releasing, and re-emerging. May we be a spiritual community that is continually renewing and re-emerging, bringing forth our spaciousness, bringing forth our next expression of being. Together we release with gratitude. And in the releasing is the receiving of the gift of life again and again. So we lay it down. We set it free. We let our heart rest. Oh, we let it, we let it be. We lay it down. We will set it free, we lay it down on the altar of love, oh we lay it down, we set ourselves free, we let our heart rest, and we We set ourselves free, we lay it down on the altar of love, oh I lay it down, I will set it free, I will let my heart rest, I can let it, I can let it be. I set myself free, I lay it down on the altar of love. So with your eyes closed, we join together in realizing that our world, humanity, is ready to lay down certain ways of being. We are ready to lay down ways that would cause us to compete instead of cooperate. We would lay down ways of being that would see us as better than or less than, and we would lay hold of the way of being that would see us as all holy. We lay down ways of being that are destructive only for the purpose of being destructive. And we lay hold of creativeness. We lay hold of being constructive in, with inspiration and compassion. And so we lay these down and we see our collective human race laying these things down, releasing and awakening to a higher way of being, a higher way of being that has realized the result of those actions, has gain the gifts, has experienced the pain, and will take that and go forward into higher ways of being. And so we claim this and we know this for ourselves, and we claim it and we know it for all humanity. For we were created just as the caterpillar to become the butterfly. We too have been created to advance and be beings of light and love. And so we lay hold of that, we claim it, and we lovingly let go of those things that would keep us stuck in anything other than the truth of our being. And so we lay it down, and we set it free, and we let our heart rest, and we let it be, we lay it down, we set ourselves free, we lay it down. So we lay it down, we set ourselves free, we let our heart rest, and we let it be, we lay it down, we set ourselves
is love, and you are too, so oh, oh, we go, <laughs> so it is. <laughs> While you are still standing, would you turn and wave to our live stream audience? We want to thank you for joining us and joining in in this commitment this week to be with the idea of release. So how many of you have a trip to Goodwill or Salvation Army already (laughs) brewing in your mind? Yeah. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I want to thank you for engaging these, uh, these capabilities, our aspects of who we are. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for your presence. I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank our many volunteers that are already coming out and taking care of the lawn and inside and outside. Remember the invitation, not this Monday and Tuesday, but the following week. I believe it's the 10th and the 11th. If you want to come and get your green on, come on out and help with our um, the potting shed. There's a company that's going to do about $10,000 worth of landscaping. And as much elbow grease as we put in, we can save some money and help move that along. So it's a great, great way to come out and meet some other folks, learn something from the potting shed. Just don't tell them how to do it. Let them tell you how to do it. <laughs> just, just release that. <laughs> um, first Sunday in May, May Day, we want to invite you to be here at the Sunday service, and then we're going to have food, music, fellowship. We're going to celebrate a post-COVID outdoor celebration where we can play together and have some fun. So I want to invite you to that. And then, of course, next Sunday is Palm Sunday and then Easter. So there are some exciting things lining up. Our very own Cat Williams has got a beautiful Ricky Byers Beckwith song that just wraps this up beautifully that says, I release and I let go. Cat Williams. And this is what I have to say. I really.
I release and I let go. Please remain standing. We're going to close together with a prayer by James Dillett Freeman. We finally have the words for you after it only took a year. So, <laughs> The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Because wherever you are, you are an expression of God, and so it is. May you know that you are a blessing this week. Go in peace. Thank you so much. They're going to sing us out again. Shall we?